Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Catastrophe, a game of nine lives. This was sent to me by the original Sasquatch, and is designed by Josh Norris, with art by Jenny Parks and Jackie Davis. Start with nine lives and try to survive the chaotic mayhem. The last cat standing wins, but beware of the villain, the Grim Reaper, who is plotting your untimely demise and attempting to be the sole victor. Let me show you how to play. So in Catastrophe, you are you have start with nine lives and are eliminated when you lose all of your lives. The last cat standing is the winner, but you gotta watch out for this guy, the Grim Reaper, because he's trying to uh, kill all of you. Everybody starts with five cards in their hand. Um, these cards all do different things. You also start with three yarn balls and you start with two power cat cards. I'll just read these here. Cthulhu, choose a player. They lose one life, you gain a life. Um, Ice walkers, gain one life, can be used anytime, including immediately when eliminated, to walk amongst the living once more. These are public, uh, they're all different. I can show you a little more later, probably. Um, but yeah, you get two of those, and then five main cards. Then on your turn, you can play any number of cards from your hand and or your power cat cards in front of you. All you have to do is play it in front of you and follow the directions. Uh, so for example, this card, the king. Draw one power cat card and place it face up in front of you. Reaction cards, like, Take, uh, block the most recent card played and put that card into your hand. Um, you cannot block or take laser pointer uh, cards. We'll get into that a little bit later. Well, actually, I can get into it now. Anything with this symbol is the laser pointer symbol. Um, some other examples of uh, power cards can be Mice Mischief. All other players roll a die. Each of these players loses two lives once they roll a three to six. The Sucky Monsters. Attack. Choose a player to roll a die. They lose one life once they roll a four to six. Catapulted, attack, choose a play to roll the die. They lose one life unless they roll a six. So um, those are some examples of uh, main uh, cards you can play. Once you are done playing the cards, you draw three into your hand. Then you reveal the top card of the Catastrophe deck and everyone follows the directions. So let's see what this top one says here. Uh, let's ignore this one for now. All right, so here's an example. Top Cat Knockout. Uh, players with the most lives, they have to roll the die. They lose one life unless they roll a six. Some other examples. Copycat Olympics, if you're playing with three or more players, the player who drew this card is the judge. Other players meow or bark three times doing their best to imitate how the judge's character would sound. The judge decides which player was the best, that player gains two yarn balls. Yarn Tower of Freedom. In turn order, each player takes a turn stacking a yarn ball from the sanctuary onto another yarn ball forming a tower. You cannot adjust it. Whoever knocks it down loses a life. So as you can see, all these catastrophe cards have little mini games that very wildly. Um, there's also the Grim Reaper card, where this guy will move up one space onto this track. Any player sharing a space with the Grim Reaper are eliminated. Then everybody draws a card. So, slowly but surely, this guy moves up and up and up uh, as you go. Um, some things to note, the max hand size is seven, max power cats uh, you can have is three. The different symbols are important, but it's nothing too crazy. Red glowy dot, uh, that's the actual term. Um, these effects are played immediately and no other cards can interrupt them. Catfinity, you can interrupt any card currently being played and apply the effects of the Catfinity card. The attack cards, like I showed you before, attack another player, usually they use life. Yarn balls, you start with three, can be used uh, to re-roll a die. You can also use this to make another player re-roll a die. And as you gain or lose lives, you'll move up and down the track, like so. If the Grim Reaper catches up to you, you're dead. If you get caught, you move to the Reaper's Lair, lose all your yarn balls, and discard all your cards. Um, unless you can get back in with a special card. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Just You just move up and down the track, try to survive. You don't want to lose all your lives or get caught by the Reaper. Here are a couple more Power Cat cards, just to give you some examples. Uh, King Lionitis, play only when you lose a life. Choose a player, they lose a life. Meow Maid, take one card from each other player's hand at random. There's only one other player. Instead, take two cards from their hand at random. Aqua Cat, choose a player, look at their hand, and take two cards from it. They then draw one card. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Uh, just uh, don't die. So I'm going to be completely honest. I didn't think this was going to be much of a game. I think the art... Uh, is a, extremely well done, but there were some kind of like meany looking cats in there. there a, a lot of the cats in there are like actually based off famous cats from internet culture and stuff. 
So it made me go, is this just going to be another one of those, like, try-hard, like, obnoxious, sort of nothing games? Instead, we had a really good time with this game. Now, keep in mind, the game is very silly. So if you're a serious, prestigious board gamer who doesn't dally with silly luck, you're not going to have any interest in this. It's, there's a lot of die rolling, a lot of luck, a lot of goofy antics. This is a party game. Uh, at, and at its core, it has a lot in common with other games like Munchkin, where you're trying to screw each other over. Like, I play this card to make you lose a life and go up the ranking. Or Unstable Unicorns. Oh, I'm going to play these mean cards to, you know, hurt you. All that stuff is pretty standard, but fun, fair. You know, and this game is no exception. It's fun. It's not game-changing. It's not revolutionary, but it's fun. But where the game really shines for me is that deck of Catastrophe cards, where are these, those frantic but fun mini-games? Uh, I loved that. And in fact, I wish there were more of that in the game. I mean, there's a good stack of cards in there, but, like, I feel like the focus a little more into that would have been good than just more cards. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, the different power cards and regular cards, those are fun. It's always fun to screw people over, make them roll a die, see if they lose a life. But the mini games have such a fun variety of dexterity and die rolling. I thought they were very profoundly creative. I really enjoyed them. And then all together, it works. The theming is cute. Uh, the laser pointers, the yarn balls, the art is really nice. It doesn't slip into traps that I personally dislike with these kinds of games. So a lot of these games are gross out aesthetic. This is not, it's just cute. It doesn't overstay its welcome. And I think in a very smart move, Instead of trying to be overcomplicated, like Munchkin, it's always a very breezy and easy game to play. Its silliness is its strength. Uh, this game was a very pleasant surprise. Like, I think other games of its ilk try too hard to like make it too complicated, and then it becomes like this weird middle ground where it's not a light party game, but it's not a like a like a serious board game, so it's just kind of like a little tedious. This is really smart with its staying easy to play. So, if you guys like cats, you want a really silly but genuinely entertaining party game, I thought this was a blast. I really enjoyed it.